NFL draft and rookies. Hell yeah. Oh, yeah Podcast off the rails already. But there is not a chance in hell Justin Fields is finishing <laughs> in the top 10. There you know what, Mikey? <laughs> Shut it. He wants Why it. not? You don't want the smoke. He's Calvin Johnson. He's Calvin oh, Johnson. Oh, good. Oh, God. my yes. God. Yes, 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 and yes. What are we going to do with you? It just, you know, just add, it adds a little extra flavor to the podcast I, mean. uh, I, I think you're disrespecting David Njoku <laughs> thank god yeah. for Joe Flacco that's all I can say <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll help the owners don't draft Kadarius Tony. I got to give the people what they want I mean come on it's saying I'm gonna milk it I'm gonna milk it for all it's worth I'll give you something to milk it was rock and roll Thursday night football Thursday night podcast you're probably going to be listening to this on Friday. You know, it's playoff time for us MSU Denver folks. Fall sports going on. A lot going on here for yours truly, but we still manage to come out with an MHA podcast here this week. Fellas, Thursday night, how we doing? There's already a game on the docket for week 12, but we're still here talking about week 11. What's going on, Todd? Uh, my team still sucks. Um, oh, no, really? Ain't that yeah. the truth? Ooh. I know. Ooh, just, goodness. Ooh. Stanks. Stanks. Just stanks. Even tonight, <laughs> my players. So it it, it, it all st- it smells. It really, really smells. <laughs> stanks. Mikey, are you smelling yeah. good these days? Fresh as a daisy? Yeah, I mean, my team. Doing all feel, right. Do, feeling real good, you know. I owe you this week. I appreciate you. Hey, hey. That's what I'm doing. I, I try and help the bottom feeders, give them oh, some Oh, man. Oh, bottom feeders. Yeah, I can't argue with that. I'm moving yeah. up, though. I'm I mean, not the bottom you, bottom anymore. I mean, you don't want your season to be over before Thanksgiving. That's kind of embarrassing. <laughs> yeah, we've had a team that's been eliminated. We'll talk about that as we go through the recap. A few more on the, on the, uh, on the road to playoff elimination with, as we go into week 12 here. Well... A lot going on. We'll talk about some news. Got some MHA trivia for you guys today. Recap, of course, next week's schedule. Dough over the week. Let's get into it. I don't understand what the news is. It's just like, hey, here's a bunch of you can't fix that happened that was horrible. Ah! Uh, It's Thursday, so the news is a little different. Some more up-to-date stuff here, and we'll go through these fairly quickly. If you guys know anything, Feel free to scream at me. DeAndre Swift, limited in Thursday's practice. He's been dealing with a groin issue. CeeDee Lamb did not practice today. He's got book, uh, book back and foot issues. Separate, Eric. Separate words. Uh, Jake Ferguson, concussion. He didn't practice today for the Cowboys. Sam Laporta, full participant in practice here today. Uh, Josh Jacobs, quadricep injury and calf, limited in practice today. Uh, Michael Pittman, back in practice today. Kareem Hunt, no issues. He was able to practice in full. Isaiah Pacheco, limited in practice, uh, still not expected to play this weekend, but he's making progress. Sam Darnold, upgraded to full participation after limited work the previous couple days, foot issue. Aaron Jones, practice in full, rib injury. Devontae Smith, he also did not practice today. Brock Purdy, limited in today's practice. He continues to rehab a shoulder issue. Fellow 49er Christian McCaffrey, limited participation, uh, rest and Achilles going on with McCaffrey these days. Mike Evans, who hasn't played in a little bit, still dealing with a hamstring issue, but he looks like he's on his way to play this week. And Calvin Ridley dealing with an illness, but he was still able to participate in practice. Anything I missed for your teams today? Anybody feel good about their teams? Not really, yeah. but, you know, whatever. <laughs> the only, wise, not the, how the only thing that I'll mention is sure. that, you know, Daniel Jones, you know, oh, his on. team finally oh, realized – Hey, I'm just saying his team oh, finally realized right. what the rest of us already did, and they quit on him. So yes, uh, Devito, right? Is it Tony Devito yeah. getting the start this week? I forgot yeah. to mention that. Good Tommy job, Tommy Devito. <laughs> yeah, pick him up. No, don't don't do that. Um, no. Okay, please don't. <laughs> please do. Don't do that to yourself. <laughs> Speaking of things that Todd doesn't want to do to himself, how about some MHA trivia? Yeah. Time to play the game. All right, ladies and gents. 
Well, I guess there's no ladies on here. This isn't a long MHA trivia. I just found some stats that took place over this weekend, and whoever has the most points after we're done wins. Week 11 MHA trivia. All right. A lot of stuff happened this weekend. How about Taysom Hill? Good Lord. I'm surprised someone started him in early. Good old G starting him this week, and he went off. So here we go. Taysom Hill, one of two players since 1950 that had at least 100 rush yards, three rushing touchdowns, and eight receptions in a game. Who is this other player? We'll start with guesses. We'll start with Todd, and then I'll start giving you clues as we go along. So, Todd, can you name this player the first since 1950 that had 100 rushing yards in a game, three rushing touchdowns, and eight receptions in a game? Uh, Who you got for me? You know what? Let's go with Aaron Jones. <laughs> oh, Todd. Dime. I should give you a negative point for that. All right, Mikey, go ahead. Give me a guess. So it was 100 yards <laughs> rushing. Yes. Three rushing touchdowns and eight receptions in a game. Okay, um, I'll go with Marshall Falk. Ooh, that is not, that's a way better guess than Todd, but however. <laughs> All right, uh, <laughs> Todd, you can redeem yourself here. This happened in 2002. Um, Aaron Jones. <laughs> well, Aaron Jones had has had three touchdowns in one game before. I know, but I just, it's, it's funny coming from you. That's all. Well, that's why I, I bring I bring the laughter and the just the <laughs> what the hell you know kind of stuff. Um, uh, I'll go so 2002. Yeah, I'll go with um, Sean Alexander. That's not a bad guess, but <clears throat> incorrect. Back to you, Miguel. I'm gonna go with Edger and James. That's what my gut says. Ooh, that's a good one. It's not a bad one either. <clears throat> Wrong, however. Oof. Uh, this happened against the Denver Broncos in 2002. Oh, um, that helps at all, but Corey Dillon, Corey Dillon. I don't think he had eight receptions in that game. <clears throat> Back to you, Miguel. Okay. I'm going to go with, uh, LaDainian Tomlinson. Hmm. I think you'd be correct. Yeah. Hmm. LaDainian Tomlinson. That's a big game. Taysom Hill folks. That was huge. All right. Points. Let's go how to is, some. How, how is Todd feeling about Taysom Hill right about now? Oh man, my, my team only, sucks, listen. anyways. <laughs> 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 yeah, I had to face up against Taysom Hill. That was uh, that was quite the week. Uh, let, how about we talk about Bo Nix? He's pretty good yeah. this past week, huh? Yeah, rookie man. of the year. Come on, let's go. That was go. The, only the second full game I've seen of the Broncos, and that that was a pretty good Bronco game, not going to lie. That was impressive. Let's talk about Bo Nix. First rookie in NFL history to complete at least 80% of his passes while throwing for at least four touchdowns and 300 yards. Amazing. Uh, he cur- Here's the trivia question. He currently has 14 passing touchdowns and just two interceptions since week three. That's the third best ratio in the NFL behind two quarterbacks ahead of him in that who are those two quarterbacks so he currently has 14 touchdowns two interceptions since three wing since week three easy for me to say that's the third best ratio in the nfl who are the two guys ahead of him uh we'll start with todd um Jaden daniels oh of course <laughs> todd just loves his <laughs> so much loves oh, him to yeah. death but okay it's not a bad guess i guess he's been having a good year uh, mikey to you all right, I'm going to go with Josh Allen. Josh Allen. No, he's had a lot of picks this season. Lots of picks. Back to you, Todd. Sam Darnold. Sam Darnold. <laughs> Incorrect. Back to you, Miguel. After this, I'll start handing out okay. uh, hints, I guess. But. So if it's somebody, that, I'm just going to go somebody that I know is not really turning it over. I'm going to go with... Justin Herbert. Justin Herbert of the Chargers. Correct. I didn't think you guys would get him. I mean, he's actually had a pretty good season. They may not be 50, you know, 5,000 yards worth, but he's been pretty solid. Lots of completions, gets two touchdowns a game. 
Who's the other guy, Todd? You're down two to nothing right now. Oh, story of my life. Let's see. Um... <laughs> Is it Aaron Jones? <laughs> no, Aaron Jones Just letting you know in case you were thinking okay. about guessing him. Okay. Um, I'll go with... Um... Um, Gosh, he's been the best quarterback this year, or one of. One of. I go with uh, Joe Burrow. He has been one of the best quarterbacks, probably the best in terms of some of those stats, but not since week three as he had the third best ratio in the NFL. I guess he'd be number two. He's number one, Miguel. Give me the answer right now. Wow, demanding. <laughs> uh, I'll guess Baker Mayfield. No. Uh, hints, 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 hints. It's hard to give hints when it, you know it's this season. We're going to do uh, one more go around here. Okay. Todd, give me a quarterback this season. Um, Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson. boy. Way to go, Todd. Way to pick yeah. that up. All right. Let's go to some t- some tight end talk. Who's, who's the best tight end this week? You guys know? Ugh. Whoever scores a touchdown. <laughs> no, that's incorrect. Who was the best tight end this week, Mikey? You know who it is. Wasn't it Taysom Hill? Uh, you know, you're probably right. Who is the second best tight end? <laughs> you're, you're right. You're absolutely right. I'm sorry. This other tight end had a really great week, too. He had 13 receptions, 126 yards, and a touchdown. Um, and he's a rookie. Oh, the uh, Bowers. Good job. All right, that's not a trivia question. However, uh, <laughs> still get a point, the, <laughs> Brock Bowers uh, had 13 receptions on Sunday in one game. That's the most receptions in a game by a rookie in tight in rookie in tight end history. So uh, pretty amazing stuff. That's not the MHA trivia question. He has a hundred. Oh, excuse me. He has one. He, goodness. He has seven hundred and six yards receiving this season, becoming the first tight end to have seven hundred plus yards in his first ten career games since which Hall of Fame tight end. That made sense. So I read it again. His seven hundred six yards receiving this season uh that's the first time that's happened uh to have 700 plus yards in his first 10 career games since which since which hall of fame tied in todd i'll go with tony gonzalez not a bad guess <clears throat> correct he's not he hall, was, he in the hall of fame he is but i don't think he was that good in his first year hmm. so who was good in their first year miguel I'm gonna. Oh, you said it's a Hall of Fame tight end. Correct. Yep. Okay. Thought I'd give you that hint right out of the gate. Hmm. Oh, man, I don't know. Hall of Fame tight end. Uh, I'm gonna go with Kellen Winslow. Kellen Winslow. <laughs> Incorrect. Back to you, Todd. There are. Uh, we got here one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 20, oh. 25 tight ends in the Hall of Fame. Oh, um, Shannon Sharp. Shannon Sharp. There's no Correct. way. Uh, mm-hmm. This happened in 1961. Yeah. Sharp <laughs> wasn't that good in, in, right off the bat either. Uh, I'll go with uh, Mike Ditka. Is that the right answer, Todd? Probably is. That is correct. Mikey that. takes a three to one lead. I don't know if is Kevin Wins in the Hall of Fame and not just not seeing him on this list. Uh, he's gotta be. Not junior. <laughs> I'm a soldier. A soldier. <laughs> I don't think he is in the Hall of Fame. I think he's but this th- list is wrong. Oh. Know. Your list is wrong, son. I don't know. I don't see him on here. Uh, all right, we'll just keep going here. We'll keep going with the Brock Bauer stuff. He did a lot of stuff this week. He also joined which player in reaching 70 receptions through their first 10 career games? I'll give you a hint after the next go round, Todd. Um, Antonio Gates. Antonio <clears throat> Gates. No. Doesn't necessarily have to be a tight end either. Oh. This is just all players. Oh. Reaching 70 receptions to their first 10 career games. 
Uh, we talked about it early. I'll go with Anquan Bolden. <clears throat> Incorrect. Um, Larry Fitzgerald. <clears throat> I like how you're rattling these off, though. That's good. <laughs> uh, da, 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 da. I'll go with. Let's go with Justin Jefferson. Not a bad guess, but incorrect. This person's first year, once I bring this up, took place in 2014. Oh, um, OBJ. That is so good with those years. So good with those years. Uh, it's three to one in favor of Miguel. Um, so remind me, Mikey gets first guess this next go around. Um, Bowers has four 10 reception games this season, tying which tight end for the most by a rookie all time in one season. So four 10 reception games ties him for the most all time by a rookie in one season. And it is a tight end. We're talking about tight end category um, here. I'll go with Travis Kelsey. <clears throat> Not a bad guess. Well, I'll Over go back to TD. I'll go to, I'll go with Antonio Gates. Antonio Gates. <clears throat> Incorrect. Uh, let's go with... Let's go with Rob Gronkowski. It's not a bad one, but... <clears throat> incorrect. Uh, the rookie season of this tight end was in 2002. Uh... Ben Coates. Ben Coates. Uh, late. Mm. Oh yeah, he was in, he was in the early nineties. Uh, two thousand two. He was an all-star. <laughs> this this, this is this is a shot, man. I'm gonna man. There's two guys that I want to guess, but I'm gonna go with. Uh, let's go with Dallas Clark. Oh, that's a good guess. <laughs> Might be your other one. This tight end. Played for Carolina, the Saints, and the Giants. Oh, um, it is, it's Jeremy, my other one. Yeah. Jeremy Shockey. <laughs> Correct, Todd. Way to go, kid. Way hey. to go. You tied things up three to three. He's from the U. I should know that. Oh, man. All right. So, <laughs> tiebreaker here. Okay. Who leads all tight ends? In points scored in our league this season. Anybody can answer. I'll just let anybody go. I I feel like this is a trick question. Because <laughs> it's definitely it's definitely it's definitely not. Like, uh, it, it should be Brock Bowers, and so I'll say Brock Bowers, even though I think it's a trick question. Mikey wins. Damn it. <laughs> I think I thought you were trying to get one of us to say taste. That's why right. I answered. That's why I asked it. I was like, they're going to think I'm going to try to fool them. It, just would, it would be too easy to be like, oh, it's the guy we're talking yeah. about. Yeah. No, it's... <laughs> Mikey wins MHA trivia. Damn it. Good job. Oh. Well, there you have it. Brock Bowers, 124 points. He's got 70 receptions, 706 yards, and three TDs. He's killing it. He's got more points to, than Kittle, Kelsey, and K-Dot. Just, ima just imagine if they get a real quarterback to throw him the football, too, how mm. good he's going to be. <laughs> no kidding. All right, let's get into the Week 11 recaps. You guys can let me know if I make any mistakes or miss anything, or if you'd like to add anything. We'll start things off with 9-1, notorious CUP, of the top team in the league versus the worst team in the league at 1-9, Belt Sanders. Uh, da, 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 da. Juwan Jennings, folks, having a resurgence. We kind of forgot about him. He wasn't doing too much. Debo is back. But he's got two straight weeks and double figures, including a whopping 20 points this past weekend. And how about that combo of Patrick Mahomes and Xavier Worthy? Uh, 58 points between those two Chiefs players. And Allen's squad finished with 125 points after Sunday night. Victoria CUP got a nice 47-point game from Sam Darnold. And how about 13 from Kenny Walker? But they found themselves down 48 points heading into the Monday night game. CUP had Nico Collins, Will Disley, CeeDee Lamb, and Brandon Aubrey. Lamb and Disley did their jobs, combining for 27 points. How about Disley getting picked up and he scores a touchdown? Mm, that, that's how you know your season's going well. But Collins, just four receptions for six points, and Aubrey just one field goal and one pat 
for six points. CUP falls to the Belt Sanders, 125-118. to 118. CUP falls for just the second time this season. And for the Belt Sanders, it's just their second win on the season. And get this, folks. The last time CUP lost came in the same week when the Belt Sanders last won a game, and that was in week three. How about that? Isn't that fun stuff? It's great. Well, it's that, great. Allen gets a win, funny. but he also gets to, you know, say yeah. bye-bye to his season. So. That's right. That My next set, sentence here is Quain. He clinches a playoff spot. The Belt Sanders, they are eliminated from the playoffs or eliminated from playoff contention, I should probably say. Sorry about that, Belt Sanders. Uh, great job on the win, on the upset. Uh, but, yeah, that's about as far as it goes for you. So, Notorious CP now 9-2, and 2-9 two, two and nine for the Belt Sanders. Also, a clinching a playoff spot for Kil- was Kilgore Trout, who takes advantage of CUP loss and uh, goes to the top of the RMAC standings. They defeat Chad Powers Fan Club 155-124. to 124. Joe Burrow, ladies and gentlemen, I hate him so much. <laughs> I hate that he's having such a great season when he was just so terrible for me. Uh, third straight week for Joe Burrow, 60 points or more. He had 63 against the Chargers. Cooper Cup had a monstrous game versus the Patriots, 23 points. And how about 24 from his kicker? That's how you know that season's going well. 24 points from Chris Boswell. Chad Powers didn't have Rashad White or James Conner due to buys, but continues to get huge numbers from Jamar Chase. He, they, he racked up 22 points. Justin Herbert, we talked about earlier, having a good season, 45 points, but it wasn't nearly enough. Chad Powers falls to four and seven. Kilgore improves to nine and two. Thanks, Kilgore. Appreciate that. I definitely needed that victory. Uh, how about seven and three hot tamales versus five and five lion rip? Pickup of the season, at least pickup of the week for the hot tamales. Jameis Winston comes off the free agent wire and racks up a ridiculous 60 points. You suck, Miguel. Actually, you're great. But you suck. Uh, did, did so against Saints defense. Revenge game. Pairing that up with his three-headed monster of running backs, Derrick Henry, Saquon Barkley, and Josh Jacobs, 62 combined points. Mikey, I hate you. That was more than enough for the Tamales who defeated Lion Rip 157-126. to Brian Robinson Jr. and newly traded for running back Jameer Gibbs. They combined for 30 points, and Puka Nakua had a big day with 19, but just mediocre days from Jalen Hurts, who only had four more points than Saquon Barkley. Uh, Tamales now up to 8-3. and three. Lion rip down to five and six. Nice job on the Winston pickup, Miguel. And thanks for the win. That helps me out as well. Oh, you're welcome. And since you said to correct you and you're wrong, you did say oh. Kilgore Trout was on top of the Armax standings. Yeah, Armax oh, standings. <laughs> <laughs> Showed you how much I've been working, folks. Showed you how yeah. much I've been working. Sorry, the MHA standings. <laughs> My mis- if he's on top of the Armax standings, good for him. I yeah, guess that's he's awesome. playing for the championship this week at home. <laughs> That's phenomenal. That's that's great. Talk about your win this week, Miguel. Yeah, I mean, Jameis Winston. There wasn't a, a whole lot of quarterback options. I, you did not want to run Kirk Cousins this week. No, I was not going to run them against the Broncos <laughs> defense. There just wasn't any way about it. Not with that pass rush, and you guys saw why. Yeah, um, no kidding. But yeah, I mean, he he was great. It turned into a situation thanks to Taysom Hill where Winston had to throw a ton, which is exactly what I wanted. Almost threw for four hundred yards. Turned out great. And then, uh, you know, I've turned around and dropped him. And that was the yeah. right move, too. That was the right move, too. Yeah, we saw that tonight, <laughs> Thursday night for week 12. That was a fun mm-hmm. game, honestly. It's one of those moments because I work outside a lot and I work outside in the cold and you just see all the snow and I'm like, I'm so glad I'm not outside right now. That doesn't look fun at all. But the game was actually pretty fun. Mm-hmm. Well, good job, Miguel. Eight and three. You're on your way to earning a spot. I'm surprised you haven't clinched yet, but. Maybe that's just all mathematics at this point. It is. It'll happen this week. <laughs> uh, next matchup here, four, six and four Eaton W's, uh, three and seven Gonzo Cats. Eaton W's improves to seven and four, staying close with that top group after put, putting the smack down on the Gonzo Cats, 180 to 117. Despite an off night from CJ Stroud, who'd managed just 33, Kevin's trio of running backs and Brees Hall, Joe Mix, and Chase Brown. Combined for an awesome 78 points. We talked about Brock Bowers having just a remarkable season, 25 points. Gonzo Cats got a nice, the Gonzo Cats got a nice day from Josh Allen, who hit over 50 points versus the Chiefs and got another solid afternoon from DeAndre Swift. He got 15 versus the Commanders, but less than a point from the Chiefs defense, who took on those Bills, and just 1.45 points from Kyle Pitts back down to earth. Gonzo Cats falls to three and eight on the season. 
we mentioned Eaton W's now seven and four. Uh, six and four Cooper's Cousins versus three and seven Lemonheads. Lemonheads had their best week of the season by far. I, I'll talk about it afterwards, but score, they scored a whopping 186 points to take down Cooper's Cousins. Uh, first round pick, Amon Ross St. Brown went bananas. Season high, 30 points for the Lions wide receiver. And the quarterback move kind of paid off. Uh, Tua looked like the Tua of old, 57 points. And then finding uh, John New Smith, tied in. I don't know where this came from. He's been playing well, but he had two t- touchdowns this week and 23 points. Uh, Devin A. Chan also benefited from Tua's big day. He had 18 for Cooper's Cousins. Uh, but the running back that was not that was red hot coming into week 11 was Bijan Robinson. Well, he faced those vaunted Bronco defense who held the Falcons running back in check, just eight points. Jordan Love was held in check by the Bears defense in Chicago, throwing for just one touchdown. And uh, just 35 points. Uh, big win for the Lemonheads. Improved to four and seven, keeping their hopes alive. Cooper's Cousins falls to six and five. Big, big win for the Lemonheads. And that was just that was just one of those days. I happened to be home all day, and everything worked. I love those days. I feel like that happens once every three years, <laughs> where it's just like everything went well. I thought I was going to be. I didn't think I was going to be screwed. I had a pretty big lead, but you know, I made that move on the quarterback side of things. And putting good old Jared Goff on the bench because he'd been averaging something like 30 points on uh, the like the last three or four weeks. He hadn't done really much. I was like, I got to make this change if I'm going to make this happen. And I did come out with a win. But Jared Goff, boy, he had quite the 60, day. 66 How much was it, Todd? Points. 66 points. 66 points. Thank goodness that didn't come back to haunt me. Yeah. Big time win. Um, excited to keep things going here for me this week. Uh, let's finish things off here. Five and five NWA and three and seven Butterfingers. And finally, the NWA. Uh, and so the NWA makes it two straight wins after taking a big bite out of those Butterfingers and their season. Did so by a final of 150 to 118. The story of this game, we mentioned Taysom Hill. The St. Swiss Army Knife exploded for 40 points against Cleveland on Sunday afternoon after scoring just 47 points in the first six games of the season. Hill. Played, uh, just went absolutely nuts. 40-burger on the season. NWA also had Tyreek Hill's best day since week one, 16 points. Todd squad got 15 points from his old friend David Njoku. An amazing uh, 12 points from Marquez Valdez-Scantling. Just amazing to see he's in a starting lineup, but he had 12 points. Uh, his other wide receiver struggled. It's been his, his bugaboo all season. Eight points from Darnell Movy and Cedric Tillman. Uh, Butterfingers fall to 3-8. and eight. NWA keeps their season going. Uh, improves to six and five. Todd, do you want to say anything about this week or should we just move on? <laughs> Let's just move on. There's nothing really to say. All I traded right. for I thought I was like, oh, bring Aaron Jones back. You know, you know maybe maybe that'll spark not the fire. about that trade. We didn't, no, we haven't talked about that trade. So Todd trades for his best friend in the world, Aaron Jones mm-hmm. and Cedric Tillman for Jameer Gibbs. Um, I didn't think it was the best move, but I know you try, had to, you guys tried to do something, maybe keep, Things going with Tillman, but he did not do well. Jameer Gibbs, I think, had 20 some points. Not that it would have mattered in your situation, but you did yeah, give it, a nice piece to Aaron, who continues to fight for a playoff spot. Yeah. I, <laughs> I thought that, the- you know, it was interesting because going into that game, he was taking on uh, Mikey, who had David Montgomery. I was like, oh, I wonder how that matchup's going to play out. Yeah, it didn't really matter mm-hmm. <laughs> in that respect either. <laughs> no. Again, so, I, mean, I mean, you're right. Just when we, as. The rest of the season goes on. Every week we're going to talk about, it and then we talk about where we went wrong or where I went, where I went wrong. It's it's been wide receivers. Wide receivers have just been my. It's just it's been the dagger every single week. Can't can't get it right, and what it is. So yeah, we can we we can move on. I mean, I'm not eliminated yet. That's kind of cool. You're not eliminated. I'm not eliminated yes. yet, but it, mathematically. But it fe- <laughs> but, it, but you know what? It feels like is there a chance he can get into the playoffs? I honestly don't think so because, like, even though he's not mathematically eliminated, yeah. I, I have a feeling that the matchups and teams, just who they play each other over the course mm-hmm. over the next few weeks, is going to eliminate him no matter what happens. Right. So, yeah, yeah, I it mean, feels like it, it feels like I'm eliminated already because obviously <laughs> you would have to win out and. It, that, yeah. You would have to basically have. I mean, at this point, what would I have geez, to have? A miracle. <laughs> well, obviously, but I mean, you would need Aaron to to lose out. Hmm. 
you probably need Eric to lose that too. I mean, you're you're at a disadvantage on points, which is not helping you either. Mm. Y- yeah, so <laughs> neat, neat. As you like, 2025. Say, That's what I was. <laughs> not impossible. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the thing is, is that you know, Aaron's Aaron's schedule is tough. There's no doubt mm. about it. It is tough. Yeah, it is. Helps me. Uh, I mean, Eric's schedule is also tough. I mean, not this week, but... Uh, but I play teams you, I need to beat. Yeah, you play teams that you need to beat. So, I, I mean, it would be definitely a, a miracle. I I just, I don't know. Todd, if, it, if you were to pull this off... Yeah. <laughs> it, it would be, it, it, yeah, I mean... it. In in bizarro world for this year, if yeah, if I could pull this off and get into the playoffs somehow, yeah. I, put it this way: if that happens, I need to win the lottery tomorrow. Okay, I need to win the lottery because because if, if I if I'm able to pull that off, but it's it's not. I mean, it, I mean, it, I'll put it this way: because you'd need Dylan to lose out too. So I mean, uh-huh. you. I need a lot of help. You played Dylan the last week. I played Dylan this week, and then you just need Miles to beat him. So I mean, there's. There's well, ways, we'll, put it, we'll put it this way, Mikey. I need, I need, I need more than just three or five points from my wide receivers, and you know, I, I need a lot of things. But it's what <laughs> it is. Like I said, like I said last on the last last week's podcast, I'm gonna put my lineup in. I'm not gonna, you know, like I said, I'm not gonna just, you know, just phone it in. I'm gonna put in a lineup, and you know, and still hope if I can win. But yeah, it's it's. It, it it would it would take a huge huge miracle for me to to you know to to get out of this hole i mean would this be more impressive than last year oh hell yeah it would be but it's it's not gonna happen fellas I, and i'm okay with that i'm okay with that fantasy football yeah. is fun it loves you it loves you one minute and hates you the next but it, at the end of the day it's still fun and you still gotta just gotta you gotta you gotta roll with the punches so there you go yeah, it's essentially, you know, there's going to be teams I I feel like that get in that these those last two spots are kind of up for grabs. I feel like there's going to be really I feel like there's going to be both maybe like five and six are going to be seven and seven. Like for Kevin, if he gets one more to get to eight, he'll get in. Uh, but yeah, so NWA and Dylan both at six and five, you know, and the fact that you know, NWA plays Kevin, he plays Eric, like that makes that very interesting. Mm -hmm. You know, the fact that Dylan plays me and, you know, he's got two games against Todd and Chad power. So, I mean, we'll see what happens, but yeah, I mean, it's like, like I said with Aaron, I mean, (laughs) Aaron made some moves and I'm sure the reason he did it is, you know, trying to make the playoffs. He, I'm sure he saw his schedule. He knows he hasn't played the top two teams yet. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be difficult. Woo! It's going to be fun. Coming down yeah. the stretch. <laughs> Only a few weeks left to go. Uh, Doe of the week, a lot of blowouts here in week 11. There was only one I saw, Miguel. Did you see the same? Uh, I, so the I only mean, one I, I saw. I figure it would probably have to be Jackson Smith and Jigba. That is correct. That's the only um, one I saw. Instead of Terry McLaurin. Yeah. Scary yeah, Terry McLaurin. I, I mean, that's tough because he's been pretty good this season. But, I mean, that's the only one that yeah. is reachable. And, I mean, uh, JSN. I was looking at the wide receiver uh, rankings here this season, and I think he's in the top ten. Three, six, seven, eight, nine. He's ninth in scoring. But <laughs> guess who's ahead of him? <laughs> Terry McLaurin at number seven. So I mean, it doesn't surprise <laughs> me that he's that high, just given that you know, yeah, the state. Geno Smith season. has been passing a lot, yeah. and DK Metcalf's been out, and so yeah, I mean, somebody's getting those points, and it's not Tyler Lockett. So not Tyler Lockett. He might be <laughs> not Tyler there. Lockett, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry, Quain, you're getting the dough of the week. No, 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 no. You're fine. You're still in the playoffs. Way to go, kid. All right, let's get into the studs and duds, and we'll start with those studs. The cream of the crop. Nobody does it better. Go ahead, Todd. Who stood out in week 11 for you? Well, might as well. Taysom Hill. Taysom Hill. Oh, goodness. 40 40, 40 points. (laughs) This point should have gone to uh, uh, Alvin Kamara. Damn it. Yeah. (laughs) 
<laughs> Alvin Kamara. It did not. No, Taysom did Hill, not. man. I don't know. Here, here's a stat line. If you guys don't know what it is, he had 40 points. He had one completion for 18 yards. He did have a pick on top of it. Uh, 138 rush yards, three rushing touchdowns, eight receptions, 50, 50 yards, excuse me, and a fumbled loss. So he could have had more than 40. <laughs> he had two turnovers on top of it. But that is a bananas number for a tight end. Even with Brock Bowers and what he did, it was still Taysom Hill Day. 40 points. That's nuts. And it keeps NWA season afloat here. Uh, Mikey, stud. Is it Jameis Winston? You know, I, I wanted to give it to Jameis Winston, but I'm actually going to give it to Saquon Barkley. Ooh. Um, again, because this is the fourth time this season that he's crossed the 30 point mark, which is just I hate him so much flat out. Incredible. Like I expected him to be very good. Obviously. I mean, I drafted him in the first round, but even I am floored with how well it's turned out going, you know, to the Eagles and playing behind that incredible offensive line. And it's, I mean, he's doing things like I don't think even Christian McCaffrey had four 30 point games last year in his incredible season. No. Well, uh, thinking I'm, I just looked at it. He had two and two. Yeah. I mean, he was consistently above twenties, but yeah, I mean, four times above 30. That's just nuts. And it hasn't even really like, well, McCaffrey get picks up a lot of his stuff through receptions too. Barkley's only got 23, but when you have 10 touchdowns already, and over 1,100 yards, like that I, I, Eagles. I, go ahead, Miguel. I'm just wondering, like, what his point total would be if he wasn't getting sniped at the one yard yeah, line by Jalen Hurts. Those are the next words out of my mouth. Like, just imagine <laughs> what he would have without the push push. Yeah. He, he, he he would be. He, put it this way: if that was the case, he'd be he'd be your MVP in fantasy and reality. If that was the case. Well, you still have Derrick Henry. <laughs> Mikey's got the two top running backs in the league in terms of points. <laughs> So screw you, Miguel. But yeah, he was pretty incredible. Um, I'm just going to go with Jameis Winston. That to have, I mean, dude had 30 completions, 395 yards, two touchdowns, four of those 60 points. To pick him up off the bench, to pick the right guy um, is crazy. Now, was he the number one guy? Let me look here. It was probably Uh, No, Goff, 66. There are th- three guys ahead of Winston: <laughs> Jared Goff, sixty-six; Bo Nix, sixty-four; Joe Burrow, sixty-three; and then Jameis Winston with sixty. But, um, yeah, to, I don't know. I mean, Mikey to pick that up off and and to get that type of production. I'm sure Mikey wasn't thinking like, "Oh, I'm going to get sixty points." Like yeah. it's a revenge game in some respects. But yeah, I mean, when I saw that happening on on was it Sunday morning? I was like, "Come on." This is bananas. Like making Jerry Judy look like an all star and just piling up those numbers. It's pretty amazing stuff. Pretty amazing <laughs> stuff. Todd, you have another uh, stud? Yeah, I'll go with one of your guys, Amron St. Brown. 30 points. Um, pretty, pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. I mean, he's Brown keeps like, you know, we don't like, he's one of the, you know, best wide receivers, but sometimes we don't, you know, he doesn't maybe get the credit of the, you know, of the uh, Jamar Chase or the CeeDee Lambs or the Justin Jeffersons of the world. But, you know, he's, you know, he, he, he's really up there. He's really up there um, when it comes to that. And 30 points uh, from him for you was, 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 was pretty, pretty amazing. I mean, granted, that game was a blowout to the ends of the earth, but um, still, still great wide receiver. I think he's, I think he just doesn't get the credit he maybe deserves. And he's, he's always flying under the radar. Yeah, I think, I mean, considering it was 52 to 6, and that's some of the things that have hurt. Because, I mean, obviously I have a few Detroit players, and that's mm-hmm. hurt me where they've blown them, blown them out but haven't really tried in the second half. They kept their foot in the gas pedal in this one for whatever reason. They just kept going, and I don't know if Jacksonville just that bad. I'm surprised I haven't heard their coach has been fired yet. But, yeah, St. Brown, second amongst all wide receivers. Uh, he's had a fantastic season, his best game this pa- of the season this past week. He said 15 or more in three straight. He's one, he's one of the things I've done right this season. So way to go, Amon Ross St. Brown. Uh, back to you, Miguel, for a stud. 
I got to go with Joe Mixon. Um, he Man, has I'm just kidding. been flat out incredible. He's probably the most consistent running back this year. Like, I mean, you want to talk about he's got t- a touchdown in seven of eight of his games. He's rushed for 100 yards plus in six out of the eight. And he has over 20 carries in six of the eight. It's just like you can just chalk him up um, to get you, you know, 15 plus points every week because they're they're just using him at a at a rate that it's that's just incredible that Cincinnati never did. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I mean so he, the, so the lesson is the lesson is if a if there is a, a good running back going to a better team, pick him up. <laughs> Saquon Barkley, right? Derrick Henry, Joe Mixon, all these we talked about it in that long ass running back or I guess in that new or old faces in new places scenario. And it's worked wonders for those three guys to say the least. It's crazy. Joe Mixon fifth behind Henry Barkley, Kamara and Bijan. So yeah, Mixon's been incredible. And and Mixon missed three games. Oh, that is true. (laughs) Isn't it? He could be up there around 200. That's what I'm saying. Like it's, and he, he yeah. missed three games and got injured in one of the other ones in the first yeah. half. So like he, he's been just flat out incredible. Uh, the last one I'll say before we go to the duds, I have to mention John Smith who two touchdowns. I was able to benefit off of that from the two, a thing uh, because of what he's done. I mean, he, he, you know, he, what is he up to six ninth amongst tight ends? You know, I picked him up. I think three weeks ago or two weeks ago, because I knew that Kate Otten was coming off, uh, was coming, um, was going to have a bye week. And I was like, I need to get ahead of this. So I did this that Sunday before the previous, so week 10, I think is when I picked him up. Uh, and I was like, well, Las Vegas gives up the worst, uh, gives up the most points to tight ends. And I said, well, Kate Otten's going to have a, a bye week. I need to pick him up. And this was the guy I thought would benefit. And he was freaking tremendous. Six receptions, 101 yards and two TDs. Uh, he, he's someone I'm thinking about for the next week. I still have Kate Otten. I got to decide what I want to do. He's uh, coming off a really big game, New England. Both of the tight ends don't have best matchups, but yeah, what he was able to do, big time, big time to help me get the win and stay somewhat in contention, in contention for the playoffs. Let's talk about those duds. This is the worst. You are the worst. I hate looking at your face. I want to smash it. We'll start with Miguel this time, who stunk it up in week 11. Okay, so I'm going to go with somebody who I know Todd like. I mean, I liked him too and had so much hype going into the season, but he's he has been such a disappointment. And this he, he's going to be a candidate of mine for like bust of the year, and that's Jordan Love. Ooh. Um, Ooh. Yeah, yeah. He, he has just not lived up. He was so good in the second half of the season, so I, I completely understood – you know, know all the hype surrounding him but this year he's just he's been very inefficient um he's got you know a turnover in every single one of his games this year um and he's, he's just not playing well uh, you know i don't know why and or what's going on with maybe it's because he got the money Todd, Todd, he doesn't have that chip anymore. No chip. Yep. No chip. chip. No chip is gone. It's gone. It's gone. But he had two really, really good games where he had four touchdown passes, and and the rest has been kind of crap, to be quite honest with you. Um, yeah, twenty second amongst all quarterbacks this season. Yeah, I mean, you know, last three weeks, nineteen, thirty three, thirty five. That's not cutting it for somebody that, you know, was projected and supposed to be a top ten guy. Yeah, what is their record on the season here? I'm trying to do this quickly. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and three. So they haven't – I mean, Josh Jacobs – I mean, we talked about it. Josh Jacobs has taken some of that load off of him. He hasn't had to. I mean, with Aaron Jones injured last year, they didn't really have a running game, and so now they're able to rely on Jacobs, and maybe those numbers just hasn't come. He has one passing touchdown last three games. And Jacksonville, one of those teams – <laughs> so to only have 19 fantasy points against Jacksonville. And if you look at his schedule coming up, San Francisco, Miami, and Detroit in the next three weeks. So that's going to be tough. It's going to be tough for Jordan Love. Todd duh, uh, Dud from this past weekend. Well, and I don't know if this is really a dud because all, cause this position has been a dud probably the entire year uh, for the, for the, up to this point, the season, but um, Mark Andrews, Hell yeah, he's a dud. He's on my list. Yeah, <laughs> sucker. Uh, 
Just because he's, he's been good. That, that's the only reason why. He's, I mean, okay, three, point, three points this week, and last week he had 15, but he just hasn't been, I don't know, just hasn't been the Mark Andrews of old. I don't know what's, I don't know what's going on, but um, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't even, I, I wouldn't even play Mark Andrews anymore, regardless if he has, you know, a good game the previous week or the week before even that, but no, nah, he's just been a, I, I put it this way. I think Mark Andrews is up there for um, a, a candidate for dud, for dud of the year. I think in, in, in fantasy too. So that could be something. I would like to say that as the guy who drafted him in the, whatever fifth round or sixth round, whatever it was. But uh-huh. uh, I mean, he's still, what is he? Four five, six, seventh amongst tight ends. Um, and he's been okay. You know, he started scoring touchdowns. He was abysmal in his first five games of the season, but he's got some okay games, but, and he, he played Pittsburgh this week, which is a tough defense, but no, I mean, Aaron needed him in a big way and he didn't show up. Thus a dud. Uh, another guy that did not show up here this week. And we kind of talked about him briefly, but Terry McLaurin, mm-hmm. yeah, he's been pretty consistent. He's kind of having a resurgent season with Jaden Daniels running things over there. Um, I didn't necessarily see a lot of that game, but um, one catch. I mean, that's supposed to be a top dog. Uh, Mikey, do you have another dud from this past weekend? Yep. I don't want to do it to you, Todd, but I have to. Oh. Aaron Aaron Jones. I mean. I put to... Jones and Tillman. Yeah. But see, Tillman, <laughs> the reason I, I didn't want to put Tillman on there is because he's Cedric Tillman. So my expectations for him are not great. Oof. So Oof. it's hard for me to, you know, throw him on there. You know, he's just being Cedric Tillman. The other one, the big games were the outliers, as we saw tonight. Um, Aaron Jones, though, I mean, I know you love him. And he's been, you know, pretty decent, you know, this year. But not last week. I mean, you know, game it was a decent matchup against Tennessee. You know, a game where you figure they would need to run the ball. And he just didn't do that well. 39 yards on 15 carries. That's not, you know that's barely, you know, above two yards of carry and no scores. He only caught one pass. Meanwhile, Jameer Gibbs had over 16 points. So yeah. Yeah. Not like an Aaron Jones. Yeah. That's a story. Yeah. That's a, that's a, you know, even Aaron Jones couldn't even say me. So yeah, yeah, that's what it is. What are you going to do? I'll tell you what you're going to He's a Butterfinger Hall of Famer though. So give me He he still I hey if if you know when it's all said and done if we ever make like a Hall of Fame for our for our fantasy league Aaron Jones is going in that Hall of Fame. Oh, you think so, huh? <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> we'll let the voters gonna... decide that. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, Mike, uh, Todd, do you have another dud? No, I think I, I think that's enough. I think I think Aaron Jones was kind of the uh Little little cherry on top of just grossness. So yeah, I'll mention one one more before we get to the upcoming schedule here. AJ Brown, what has happened to AJ Brown? Is it Saquon Barkley? Is that what's happening to this guy? Has not been his normal self here this season. He had eight points, which isn't the worst number in the world, but this, as an early second round pick, that's something you need more of. He hasn't scored a touchdown in four games because Saquon Barkley scoring all the touchdowns every week. Uh, so while he's he's getting consistent targets. Um, he's just not having his normal AJ Brown season, just three touchdowns on the season. I mean, he has some double digit games, but fairly quiet. Three of the last four have been under 10, three against Jacksonville. We mentioned, uh, not a great defense, not able to contribute. Chad powers fan club falls in that one. So yeah, AJ Brown, not having his normal season. All right, the upcoming schedule, we got some interesting, as we mentioned, things are getting kind of in, uh, crazy in terms of after the, what, the top four up top, uh, nine and two Kilgore Trout versus nine and two Notorious CUP Super Bowl preview. We'll have to wait and see. Mikey thinks otherwise. Uh, speaking of hot tamales, they are eight and three. They'll take on six and five Scuba Cousins, which means I need Mikey to win again. So if you're coming over to my house, you better win. I'm going to throw you out on your stinking <laughs> rear end. Uh, seven and four Eaton W's. They're taking on six and five NWA. Go, Kevin. Let's go there. Uh, five and six Lion Rip taking on three and eight Gonzo Cats. So rooting for the Gonzo Cats this week. Four and seven Lemonheads versus two and nine Belt Sanders. Finally, I get the worst team in the league. Finally. 
Uh, four and seven Chad Powers fan club versus Belt Sanders. Todd, rooting for you too, buddy boy. Yeah, I mean, I'm not off to a good start, but yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. Uh, a lot of buys this week. I even saw the term on Twitter, bipocalypse, as there's no Falcons, no Bills, no Bengals, no Jaguars, no Saints, and no Jets. <sighs> yeah, it's not going to help your case. No Camara. So, yeah. <laughs> Way to go, Todd, when I finally need you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Shit yeah. the bed. Yeah. Oh uh, no, I know that that bed's already full of shit already. So it's it's here. We're past One that. One point from Tillman, three from the Joku. Yeah, you're not you're not beating. Sir. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Not I, even I, I do want to say it's nice that you get the the last place team on a week where Kansas City's playing Carolina. So I know. Well, you hope all that comes in the first half and nothing happens in the second. Yeah, there you go. That's positive. Thinking. There's the positivity. <laughs> I don't have a lot of problems with bye weeks. So I feel okay in that regard. You know, I could still run. I still have to decide between Tua and Goff, although I think I'm going to run Tua this week. But I still have Amon Ra in the mix. Kyron Williams needs to get back in the scoring touchdown. I'm going to have to run Bucky Irving this week with no James Cook. So we'll see how that goes. But, yeah, uh, still relying on Detroit against Indianapolis. We'll see how all that goes. But, uh, Najee Harris for the belt Sanders, just six points in the snow. So that helps out a ton as well. And he hasn't changed out his kicker. I don't want to say that out loud if he listens to the podcast, but he does not have a kicker in. <laughs> so, or like, he does. It's Tyler Bass, but he's obviously on a buy this week. So we'll see how all that goes. Mikey, how are you feeling about your matchup this week? Uh, pretty good. You know, I'm playing Dylan, which obviously, like you said, you need me to win. It's a good week for me to play him because the Falcons are on a bye, so that means that I don't have to deal with Bijan Robinson. Mm-hmm. Uh, and at this point, he's benching DJ Moore, so that's you know kind of nice. He's you know going to go with Keenan Allen instead on that you know Bears offense that's been just terrible. Does he go? I mean, he currently has Jordan Love versus San Francisco in. But Geno Smith, he's been playing well, has the Cardinals yeah. at home, no less. I don't know. Maybe he's figuring, like, in Green Bay, San Francisco, that they're going to need to put up points, so they'll have to throw. I don't know. He Maybe. picked up Devin Singletary, which, uh, you know. Yeah, he, he was texting me today. He was uh, wondering why he couldn't pick up uh, Jerome Ford. I said, well, Ford was just dropped this morning, or yeah. Wednesday morning, uh, yeah. during the the waiver wire, so he can't – he can, yeah, the waiver doesn't clear for a couple days, so he could not pick him up. He was I mean, a little upset. Not that Jerome Ford did much. Well, that's what I'm saying. Not something you should necessarily complain about. Cause... Yeah, because it did not work out anyway. <laughs> so there you go. Mikey's got to worry about his kicker, but that's a kick. Mikey, is he can pick up a kicker and well, do fine. He's a Josh, free agent whisperer. And Josh Jacobs is, like, questionable. But he's a questionable every week, and then he plays. So it's all yeah. good. Well, folks, there you have it. Coming down the last few weeks of the season, Eric still has a pulse. I'm tied. I don't know. Yeah. Mikey in good shape. Aaron in the mix, too, to try to sneak into that playoff. So a lot to be determined here this weekend. And if we hang out, it'll be the first time we did this season. There you go. Eric's been busy this week or this season, yeah. this whole year. Busy, busy, busy as we started off this show. Well, gentlemen, thanks for coming on. Sorry to everyone else if you were hoping to get this before Thursday night, but that's where we are these days. I'm going to actually edit this as soon as I'm done talking to these gentlemen so people can have it for Friday. So for Mikey Renault, Todd Diamond, I'm Eric Lansing. We'll see you next time on the MHA Podcast. Played the wrong music once again.